In this video, we're gonna look at the Coiled Web App and what it can tell us about our DAS clusters that we've run and previous DAS clusters that we, are, that we have run historically, that our teammates are running. Um, I've just recorded a few videos. Maybe you've seen one. Uh, and we can see I was playing a little bit just 10 minutes ago with the XGBoost and hyperparameter optimization demo. Prior to that, I was playing with Uber and Lyft. And prior to that, I was playing with um, the like Dask Futures demo. And I can see those all here. And I can see when they ran, how many tasks I did, how active I was. I can see how much, how many CPU hours I burned. So 100 CPU hours here is about $5. If I'm using just basic defaults. And I can, so that I can sort of see actively what's going on. Um, there's lots of things I can play with. I'm gonna sort of show you some of those things. We're just kind of explore some of this work that I've done. So first, I'm actually done with this thing, these clusters, I'm gonna stop them, right? So I can stop these things remotely. I can see what other people are doing. Um, I also I can go and look and see what's happened historically. So let's go and take a look at one of these clusters and see what I did. So let's go play with maybe Uber Lyft. So uh, mostly I was idle. This cluster I left on accidentally after making the video and I can see that here. Fortunately, Coil turned it off for me once it realized I wasn't doing anything for 20 minutes. Well, let's zoom into this area where I was active. And I can go and I can see the code that I was running. I can see uh, metrics during that time. Was I CPU bound? Was I memory bound? Was I bound by network? Um, well, in this case, I just wasn't bound by anything at all, right? So I actually have probably a too large of a cluster. I should scale this down. It's a good signal for me to sort of look at if I want to reduce my costs. Um, I look at other things like the history of my cluster and what happened. I can go and download logs for all the workers. So a lot of very useful things that I can play with here if I, um, if I want to debug something. When something fails, there's a lot of information that's here that can help me diagnose that failure. Nothing failed, which is great. I didn't have to use all this stuff, but it's nice for me knowing that it's here. I'm gonna go back to this dashboard for a second. I wanna cue in a few different things. I can also see um, my colleagues that are on my team and what they've been doing. I can see what they're, what they're up to. I can see like for some reason, James is creating a lot of clusters that have zero tasks. That's odd. Maybe I should go and talk to James and see what's going on. In the clusters that are running, I also get signals. So we capture a lot of metrics, a lot of hardware and performance metrics about your clusters, and we can feed that information back to you, either as plots or sometimes, actually what's actually useful, just aggregated signals. This workload, for example, touched disk. It had low CPU utilization and it had idle workers. And there's, some, there's some concerns that I have generally about this cluster, and then I can take a look at it. Um, we can go and take a look at other things that have been running. Um, so my colleague Hendrik, ran a computation, looks like it was a pretty big computation, 100,000 tasks. And he ran some of the same things. He was, he was touching disk, network bound. Let's go see what Hendrik is up to. Um, yeah, so it looks like he did use his cluster about half the time. It was pretty active. Um, well, it looks like Hendrik is doing a lot of sort of parquet work and then setting it. He's doing a lot of sort of shuffle benchmarking is my guess. Um, so this is, this is handy. We can sort of look and see what's going on. I can see how Hendrik is doing. Um, what else do I want to play with here? Coiled gives you a central place to look at billing across your team. So I can see who's been active and inactive over time. Uh, we had a conference uh, last week. So I was at that conference, just like burning credits, having a demo station going all the time. Looks like I burned 2,400 CPU hours. If I'm using, you know, basic instance types, that's five cents per CPU hour. That's a decent amount of money. That's, you know, uh, Let's see, multiply that by five, it's like hundred bucks. Um, so it's, you know, I burned a hundred dollars. You know, if I had a manager, uh, they would come and yell at me a little bit. But I can see what's happening over my team over time, which is quite useful. I can also invite people to this team, right? They, my colleagues might not know how to use the cloud very well, but I've already got Coil set up attached to the cloud. It's very easy for me to send uh, them an email that gives them access, gives them a token, they connect to this team, and then they can run um, Dask at scale on their, on their own. I can limit how much damage they can do, right? You can only create clusters of a thousand cores at once. Also, you can only use sort of a 10,000 CPU hours per month, about $500 if you're doing things without spot or anything. This allows me to sort of constrain and bound the amount of damage that my colleagues can do to my cloud budget. 
Uh, I can also go and look and see what everyone's doing over time. There's a lot more that's here, but I think this gives you a basic understanding of the, the basic value of seeing what people have done over time, how we can think about optimizing it, how we think about constraining it, and adding new people to the team. This view is what we use when we help our, our users and our customers. And we find that it's been helpful for expert users in a team. Often people who use Coil or who use Dask have one or two people who are really good at it and five to 10 people who are, who are getting started, who are not quite as good. This view allows those really good people to be very efficient at helping the rest of their team. A process that can be either very frustrating or very satisfying, as you know. Um, so that's it. Hope this is useful to you. Uh, you might want to subscribe to find more things or take a look at some other examples if you're using Dask with futures or data frames or machine learning. So thanks. Thanks for your time. Cheers.